today we test the Creality Wi-Fi box. It's a budget alternative to Octoprint and we're going to find out if it's worthwhile or worthless. You might have noticed a new product from Creality recently called the Creality Wi-Fi box. In fact, I think they were giving it away with some printers recently on sale. What it aims to do is to compete with Octoprint, an operating system that runs on a Raspberry Pi to run your 3D printer and even extend its functionality using some amazing free plugins. Priced at only 20 bucks, it's probably natural to wonder whether this thing is worth taking a punt on. Well, I've tested it out so you don't have to and the results probably won't astound you. Let's start by looking at the product page. The product we're testing today is the Creality Wi-Fi Cloud Box and it retails for 20 US dollars. On this page, there's a lot of marketing talk and it's not really that clear what this product does. It is an alternative to Octoprint where we plug the box into our 3D printer. The inbuilt Wi-Fi will then connect it to the internet and we can use our mobile phone to control the printer and monitor print jobs as they're happening. If we come to this linked page with more information about the product, we can come to the section reasons to use Creality Wi-Fi box. And here we discover it's the truth that in 2020, one of the biggest problems that plagues the world is having to read G-code files by inserting an SD card to a 3D printer. And they do acknowledge Octoprint here, but they also say that it's hard to set up and that Octoprint requires a Raspberry Pi, which will cost more than $50. They claim easy installation using a QR code. And again, they talk down Octoprint saying it's very powerful, but it is limited to being used on the local network and you can't access it from outside your home or wherever the printer is set up. One of the big things that this product does offer that's typically not done with Octoprint is cloud slicing. And this is achieved through the Creality Cloud site where we can download unlimited STLs for free, share models, and have online slicing to start those print jobs remotely. Some pretty big claims there. I purchased a couple to test them out. So how did it go? The Creality box comes inside a Creality box and it's pretty well packaged. Inside we have the actual unit. Hopefully you can tell compared to my hands, but the length and width are just a little bit bigger than a credit card. We have spots for the micro SD card, a reset switch. On the back, we have an ethernet port, a port for supplying power and two USB ports. Also included is a USB micro cable for connecting to the printer and a USB mini adapter in case the printer needs that. If you dig further into the packaging, you'll find a second USB micro cable and that can be used to power the box. We have a card related to compliance for the Wi-Fi feature and we have the manual in Chinese and English with all of the parts labeled and then step-by-step -step instructions to get going. So let's follow them. The Wi-Fi box does not come with a micro SD card. So you will need to supply your own, format it to FAT32 and then insert it into the side of the box. This acts like a hard drive and the box won't work without it. The other thing you need to supply is a five volt power adapter to power the Creality box. It must be capable of supplying at least 2.4 amps. This one is a smidgen above that, and you'll probably find that most modern mobile phone chargers will do the trick. After powering up the Creality Wi-Fi box, we're unable to proceed until we install the companion app. I'm testing the app on Android, and here is a Google Play page for this app. The screenshots all seem interesting enough, a little bit like Thingiverse, but the reviews, maybe not so good. Nevertheless, let's press on and open the app. Opening the app reveals the default interface is a news feed. And if we want to get much further, we need to log in. And if we're a first time user, that means making an account complete with the usual email verification. After we've made our account, we'll be automatically logged in and we can tap on the plus in the upper right hand corner to add our device. The easiest way to do this is to use the built in QR code scanner and approach the bottom of the Creality box to scan the unique code. Once we've done this, our device will be added and we have a chance to give it a name. I started with Ender 5, which was my target printer. We now need to get the Creality box on our Wi-Fi network. And for some reason, it wanted location permissions, which I denied. 
and this wasn't really a problem as I could still switch over to the Wi-Fi of the Creality box, entering the default password before selecting my home Wi-Fi network and entering the details for that. From here, things got a little weird because I waited three minutes, which is pretty agonizing when you're just staring at the screen, only for the timer to finally expire and be presented with an error message that the connection failed. When I went to repeat the process, all of a sudden the device was listed as online. So I connected up my Ender 5, running an SKR version 1.3 and vanilla Marlin. We swiped down to refresh and still no connection. All the cables were connect, but no matter how many times I tried, I was stuck. In fact, connectivity with machines was a major problem for me, even though I took the time to check cables and update the firmware to the newest version. So here's a list of all the printer combinations that would not connect to the Creality Wi-Fi box. Artillery 3D X1, running LPC RevRap firmware. Prusa Mark III, with the stock mainboard and firmware. BQBX, completely stock. Ender 3, running an SKR Mini E3 V2. Second SK Go, with the Duet Maestro. Mini Delta, SKR Mini E3 Dip. Prusa Mini, completely stock. I also tried some boards not installed, including an 8-bit Creality board and the Easy Board Lite from TH3D running their unified firmware. I expected the CR10 Max to work as it has the original main board, but an upgrade to the Tiny Machines version of Marlin meant that it would connect, but the manual controls didn't work for the printer, and any time I tried to start a print job, it would hang on loading. And this was true for multiple files. I did send a support query through their website. I haven't heard back yet, but if I do, I'll update in a pinned post. So that's a lot of combos that flat out wouldn't work, but I also had some other combinations that kind of worked. The Easy 3D Nano would connect, and I was able to slice and start a print. However, you might notice here that the Z axis is not moving, and when the print was done, there wasn't actually anything left behind. The completely stock Creality 3D print mill did in fact connect and I was able to control the temperature and the fan, but not having officially been released yet, there was no support for it inside the app, so I couldn't slice any files and start any prints. One combination I found very strange that worked was the TiVo Little Monster with Lurge mainboard and firmware. Like the E3D Nano, I was able to set up a custom printer profile for this, although I have to say it's a pretty painful process, especially entering things like start and ng code through a mobile phone instead of through a normal computer. I was able to slice and start a print, but I didn't persist with it because the lurge kept on beeping every time a command was sent. Out of options? Well, fortunately, not quite. There was one board that did work, the Creality version 427 32-bit board that I purchased as part of making my guide. It still had firmware for an Ender 3 Pro in place from when it was shipped, and it did connect to the Creality Wi-Fi box. It was out of a printer, however, so I took one for the team, uninstalled my SKR Mini E3, and installed this new board into my Ender 3. All of the hardware was now compatible, so this is how the system is meant to work. The main interface has a models tab, where you can search for and browse existing models. And if you want to browse what's available, simply go to model.creality.com slash model. You can see the interface is similar to Thingiverse, but that's not where the similarities end. For many of the files on this site, they've just been blatantly ripped from Thingiverse, even including taking screenshots of the original site. To be clear, this has been done by the users of the site and not Creality. In this early stage, there's not actually a lot on offer here. Like Thingiverse, there's a lot of obscure parts that are great for specific applications, but there's not a lot of files that have wide appeal for general printing. Back on the app, once you pick a file that you'd like, you press the slice button to begin manufacture. The first step is picking which printer you like from the bottom, and then we can preview all of the slicing parameters that will be used for the cloud slicing. We do have the ability to access the ribbon along the bottom and customize the default profile. In my case, changing the retraction to suit a direct drive extruder and upping the bed temperature from 55 to 60 degrees Celsius. When we're done, we click slice and everything happens in the cloud. A few minutes later, our sliced file will appear in a list along with anyone else who has sliced it for their printer. 
we have the chance to review the slicing parameters and if we're happy with them, we can press print. We then choose our device that the Creality Wi-Fi box is connected to and press yes to start the actual printing. Initially, the G-code will download to the SD card installed in our Creality Wi-Fi box before the hot end and bed heat up and our print will be underway. Mid print, we have limited information on the progress but no controls for tweaking any settings. I did hook up a generic webcam and plug it into the Creality Wi-Fi box, but as you can see, no camera feed came up, so my guess is you're forced to use the Creality 3D Viewer webcam. When the print job is complete, you'll get a notification on the app, and after you remove the object from the bed, you're free to start another print. However, you will need to re-input any custom settings that you had, and for me, that was very annoying. So what's print quality like? Well, the first thing I'd note is despite having the first layer spot on, the priming line was way too close to the bed and therefore difficult to remove. The actual prints look okay. I believe the cloud slicer is based on Cura, so no issues there. The trouble is that we're using cookie cutter settings and the results here are not as good as my own tune slicing profiles. Now normally my position on Creality is that while they're not perfect, They've done an amazing job bringing quite high quality 3D printers for quite a low price, enabling many people to take up the hobby. But in this instance, I'm afraid they've missed the mark. This product was extremely underwhelming compared to Octoprint, which is both free as well as open source. You can get a Raspberry Pi version 3B for $36. Sure, it's almost double the price of this, but my advice would be to save a little bit extra to ensure you're getting good results. With Octoprint, installation is quite straightforward. You make an account only for your local Raspberry Pi, which means you're not surrendering your phone number or email address to any companies. You can follow guides to connect your version of Octoprint to the outside world, meaning you can monitor your printer from anywhere. There's numerous free apps available that give far more control over your printer. We have amazing free plugins and built-in time-lapse functionality. I guess this thing has potential if you're using a completely stock reality printer and you don't mind being limited to a small range of designs. In any other case, please just go with Octoprint. If you've bought one of these and maybe your experience differed, please let me know down below in the comments. If you're already an Octoprint user, let me know perhaps your favorite plugin down below too. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.